I voted. I don't know. When did the fuck did that become like such a cool thing to do? Uh, when the left needed votes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. now they made it like this is your absolute civic duty. To yeah, now it's somehow like a Coca Cola. Well, yeah. Once the left needed votes, they were like, "If you don't vote, you're fucking gay. You're fucked up." It's you love bullshit. children getting taken into camps. I like was reading all those like vote like kids are being taken into camps and people are being shot. Vote with that intensity. And it's like, yeah, I mean, do you think people just started being mistreated like last year or some shit? It's like, yeah, no, the, the Republicans <laughs> just started mistreating people. I know. And it, dude, that's what I think bothers me the most is the people act like they know better. I know. Like they know something you don't dude, like the people course. that are saying that like. Vote like families are being ripped apart. <laughs> it's like, dude, why? Like, what do you think the other side's gonna do when yeah. they get like w- this whole thing's a butt fuck? Yeah, or all of a you... sudden because you like it's like they're clearly being manipulated big time. The people s- making those types of statements are being manipulated hugely, and now they're gonna stand on a fucking soapbox and be like, get out and vote <laughs> yes. right now it's like no dude you're a moron yeah. you're getting tricked by a fucking political party into being <laughs> using this as morality and is so anything sad. i'm saying making sense mm-hmm. I, I, I just you woke ab- up you absolutely just literally sum- just woke up you summed it up dude there's people who are being propagandized who are just being like yeah i'm doing it it's like eh, nope you've been psyop you've dude. been tricked by a bunch of fucking <laughs> <laughs> by a bunch of idiots i saw this thing recently about a uh Fucking guy, Trent Sorensen, I think his name. Kent Sorensen. He, I never heard of this guy. He was like a rising political Tea Party figure. He was just, he was just some dude who like used to sell weed and was just like kind of like a. I think he's from like Illinois, like the middle of the country. Just a farm boy who just became a bad boy. He became a naughty boy, dude. He became a naughty bee. Naughty bee. He had a girlfriend, and uh, it's like his life oh, story wow. is like really tragic. But it, if you think about it, it's kind of funny that like. It all started, like, he was just, like, working for himself. You know, he, like, dropped out of school, was selling weed, started his own business, and was, like, trying to be, like, a good businessman in his community. And his wife was like, we got to get out here. And, like, they were trying to oppose gay marriage, like, back in the day. They are trying to oppose it. Yeah. They were like, yeah. dude, we can't let this happen. We, we can't, can't, like... We can't <laughs> ruin the fucking institution <laughs> yeah, of yeah. marriage. So that's that's what... He, By so gay dudes butt-fucking. This guy, and this guy was just, like, basically just chilling in his house. And was like, I'm not going to a stupid political rally. And his wife's like, it's our... We are determining the future for our kids. And he's like, Jesus Christ, fine. Oh. So he went out and apparently got, like, mesmerized, like, Trump rally effect, where he was like... Tied in out of the spiritual thing where he was like, yeah, dude, gay people are fucking horrible, dude. We got to stop them, dude. <laughs> he started running, doing political stuff. And like overnight, you know, whether, you know, whether it was like a month or so, gained like serious political steam. And just he from... came, he like started like knocking on doors, campaigning because he went and after... so he was going door to door and be like, you know, fucking gay dudes are trying to get married. <laughs> well, what happened first is he tried to go to the politicians himself. It was like, we need help to stop this. And they're like, dude, get Yeah, the they're fuck. like, get a life, you fucking loser, <laughs> yeah, dude. Just get... let them get married. <laughs> they're like, get away, dude. Stop. Yeah, it's like, I'm busy, dude. I have so much to do. What What do you want? <laughs> you want to stop gay he just, dudes? He was just this dude who literally was saying that he had to smoke weed every night to fall asleep. Was going up to them and being like, yo, uh, uh. They're like, dude. He was like 270. He's a big boy. Oh, he's a thick boy. He's a big boy. Damn, dude. I love this guy. <laughs> you know, you kind of <laughs> like him, though, when you hear his whole story. So he was like, we got to stop this. And he vowed, he's like, I'm going to, the people who shunned me, I'm going to go take them the fuck down and beat them and get elected. So he started going door to door like, yeah, you guys got to love it. And he was like getting tied in with like the evangelical vote and like they started propping him up. So he just fell into like political, local political power. And I think he got, not Congress, I don't know what's higher, Senate or, con- Senate, or Senate or Congress, but he got voted into something that was like pretty high, like yeah. higher than a state rep. He beat this guy, I don't know how. And uh, so all of a sudden he's a superstar. Yeah. And the way it works is, according to well, what he got in trouble for, if you start getting like the support of the people at a low level, people in the higher levels like Ron Paul and those guys will be like, "Yo, I'll give you twenty five thousand dollars to just come give me a nom- like to yeah. uh, support my nomination." So he was getting courted by all these people, and he, dude, he was like, he even admits he's like, it went right to my head. Like I, instantly, I was a total dickhead. He would walk around the floor or wherever he was in the house with like a. I'm I'm butchering whatever political institution he was in. He was in some sort of building like that. Okay. You know, where they have water some fountains. Some sort of building with, like, pillars. Yeah, and with, like, water fountains that smell dome. a lot like chlorine. One of those public yeah. buildings where people walk around and it's kind of depressing. He was in them with, like, a, a Bluetooth headset, and he would just be a fucking asshole to everyone in there. Like, you guys don't unite. It was basically 
if, if somehow if you put, transported me into a political setting where he was like, why don't you guys stop fighting and just unite over this? This is so dumb. And he would like refuse to shake hands with people. Oh, did. man. Just a monster. He got, uh, he was like going with this one guy, the guy was going to lose. So he got seduced into get taking money from Ron Paul or Rand Paul, whatever the fuck the yeah. guy's name is. And uh, What's this guy's name? Uh, Sorensen. Oh, yeah. Ken that's Sorensen. Right. That's right. That's Google, right. Yeah, Ken yeah. Sorensen. So he got like bamboozled into taking this money off of Ron Paul. It was like twenty five thousand dollars. So he like was he was like going for this one guy, and then jumped ship at the last minute and was like, "Nah, I'm gonna do Paul." But before he did it, he told the people he was with that he got offered money by Paul's people to jump ship, and he's like, "I'm not gonna take it, guys. I'm gonna stay with you guys." And they're like. What the fuck, man? You're you're seriously entertaining offers? And he was like, actually, I changed my mind. I'm going to go to Paul. So he took the money, goes to Paul, and then gets grilled on, like, CNN. And they're like, did you take money? And they, apparently the videos of him, he's like, uh, uh, no, no I don't, uh, I didn't take a nickel off those guys. And, and, like, in his head, he was like, technically, I didn't take a nickel. I took a check for $25,000. Yeah. Oh, my God. This guy's <laughs> so they, a fucking dude. So they investigate him, and he gets busted instantly, dude. <laughs> and they send him to a max security prison. Which apparently like, the pay to play thing was big. I think he was in Iowa or somewhere around there, and that was like a big. Everyone was doing it, so he got sent to prison, and then was in prison for a while, and was just kind of like he was fucking sentenced to fifteen months. Yeah, man, in a max security. He was in prison with like Latin kings and uh, gangsters, <laughs> disciples and shit. So he he started doing like paperwork in prison for these like gangster dudes, and then just started rallying up everyone in there, being like, "Yo, these conditions are unfair. This is bullshit." So they pulled him out of there because he was he was too alive, and put him in a minimum security, and then he finally got out, and his son killed himself. His son killed himself. Yeah, and his son he's like, all right, I'm out. I'm gonna start like getting my life back on track. And his son just like killed himself while he's in a halfway house. So now he's out of the pool. He was just like, dude, looking back on it, he's like, I don't know why I had such a problem with gay people getting married. He's like, I was definitely like super racist before I went to prison. Then I went and met people from other like ethnicities and they're all pretty much they're pretty cool for the most part he was like i don't know why he's like yeah i was definitely racist before i went to jail he's like now i'm not and like I, just, I was like real worried about gay guys getting married iowa yeah the guy was in iowa what's yeah. his name ken Sorensen, right yeah. dude i'm telling you his story is fucking bizarre this guy's a fucking douche <laughs> dude, he's, like, he's a douche let me see his picture they're all fucking dickheads <laughs> yeah, dude. anybody dude uh, but it was so funny how my... this guy was on his couch just do, I think he was doing like property maintenance or some like just regular yeah. job. He went to a, a fucking rally and was all stoned and was like, I could get into this. And just, dude, it I mean, that's ruined. How, he says, he goes, politics ruined my life. That's how I got into stand up. <laughs> I was just washing dishes and someone was like, Yeah, you want to come to an open mic? I was like, Yeah, sure. <laughs> I was like, I can get into this. <laughs> Next thing I know, I was like, Gay people shouldn't be married. <laughs> <laughs> Any politician that goes the fucking tough guy route is a fucking pussy. Yeah. Like well, him, he... this fat fucking douche, <laughs> Kent Sorensen. I'm so glad his fucking son killed himself. Oh, no, dude. <laughs> Kent Jr., dude. Kent Jr. fucking bit the bullet just because his dad was a fat fucking pussy. This guy, Woo! this guy might listen to this podcast, dude. He's gonna come fuck you up. He's like 270 pounds. I'm fucking 270 pounds, dude. This would be a fucking battle, dude. I'll fuck him up. That'd be so funny. It's big that'd be, dogs. That'd be such a funny fight. If he came up, he's like, "Why'd you make fun of my son who killed himself on your podcast? You fucking asshole! <laughs> like, fuck like, you, dude. You're a bullshit senator." Yeah, I. Uh... He said he's like politics ruined my entire family. He's like, I don't know why I thought I could get into. It. He got into it, and dude, that's what I was saying before. It is such a shark infested tank to be like, I'm gonna get in there on my own grit. These people saw him, and they're like. Scoped him out, like, offer that piece of white trash 25 grand, we'll take him out. Like, bingo, pop, he's in jail. Dude, you can't fucking play with these dudes. They fucking crushed him. Yeah. They completely set up, like, a put. I don't know what happened with that, but, like, they got him the fuck out of there. Because, dude, if, you, if you're a dude who rides motorcycles and you're 270 pounds, you're like, yeah, I don't know why gay people are getting married. People are instantly in your community, like... Yeah, dude, I'll totally vote for you. You're the fucking man. Yeah, yeah. It you should sell weed and shit. All you had to do yeah. is go door to door and people were like, oh, you're big? Yeah. You're bigger than me? Yes. You're my dad. <laughs> you're my dad now. I vote for you, dad. That's what happened. And he flew too close to the sun, dude. That Classic example. White trash Icarus, dude. <laughs> he is, dude. <laughs> and that Iowa State Senate seat getting a little greedy, dude. I know. <laughs> and then when he was in jail, his medication, he had to get like melatonin. 
given to him every night to go to sleep because he couldn't. He smokes weed every night before he goes to sleep, so like he couldn't sleep without something. So he got he like I got melatonin just to replace the usual like dose of smoking weed before going to sleep. I, everything you've told me about this guy sucks. <laughs> I, I really his story's fascinating. Right, like, to I'll me, check his story out. But so far, I mean, that's the, a story. The bullet points of him to me make he, this guy sound like a big fucking moron. Of course, but my thing is in Iowa. If you were, if you just. The yeah, walls yeah, yeah. around your life just are secluded to the Iowa Midland, and this guy came knocking on your door. You'd be like, "Yeah, fuck yeah, oh fuck yeah, get out! Th- you got my vote. Get yeah. out there, brother." If that guy walked in here right now, I'd be like, "Actually, I take back everything I said. You're the man. <laughs> That's cool what you did. I don't think gay people should get married, dude. I'm with you." He's amended to stance. Imagine being a fucking hard ass, like a tough guy, and then also being like gay people. I know. <laughs> I believe in the institution of marriage. I know. It's like what? I think this guy was just... You're riding all... your Harley and you love the institution of marriage? Yeah. You're a fucking pussy, dude. That's weird, dude. Well, he, again, he was like... He was an outlaw, dude. And then All the he... more reason to hate marriage. I know. But then he was just like, this shit's not working. Selling weed and like... He was like beating people up and selling weed and got in trouble. And he's like, I gotta get back to my local community and get back to my roots. And he like just started like a plumbing business and was like, God, gay people, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one thing that's been making me laugh a lot is all the fucking. I'm gonna be bummed. All the political ads are yeah. done for another year. I haven't. I've had They're kind of so avoided fucking them. funny. Where have you been catching them on TV? Yeah, Nonstop. I've been watching TV that much. Yeah, I was watching every game. I, every sports match I watch. Yeah. In between every commercial is just an attack ad on yeah. a complete stranger. Oh yeah. <laughs> like it's like the third district congressman from fucking some county. I like literally the only time I've ever seen any of these politicians. Is when their face is on TV and they're getting fucking crushed. Oh my god! Like it's just dude. a stranger. A How face, fun would that like, be to get employed? Just writing, just be like, give me the details of this guy's life. Give it. I think it's so funny to just be like, I've the only thing I've ever heard about any of these politicians is that they suck. I know. So it's like just a picture of an Asian dude, <laughs> and it's like Andy Kim is a fucking liar. <laughs> Look at this piece of shit. <laughs> Paid for about two times. Have either of your parents died in the last ten years? <laughs> yeah. Jim Schumer signed a bill into effect that effectively killed old people. And it's <laughs> yeah, like, what dude, the every fuck? T- it's like they always take like a caveat in a bill that's like, yeah. so technically you're taking money away from the kids. Yeah. And it's like, well, yeah, because I wanted to give them more. So I didn't sign that bill because mm-hmm. I wanted to give a larger chunk of change. Yeah. And it's like, Mark Watson <laughs> wants to get rid of money from kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ, dude. Jim Stevenson hates medicine. There's one guy around here that's really funny. Then it's like, he's been flying to get underage prostitutes. Oh my god, yeah. I saw. I he's got a ton one. of those. That's a Jersey guy, I think. That guy will still get voted in, probably. It's funny yeah, to those be are like all fans. allegations. Imagine being fans of his and just being like, eh, I gotta vote for him anyway. Fuck that. Those are allegations. Yeah. So they like, in the commercial, they even have to say it. I wonder how they got that. Those allegations. I mean, it was in the news. That he was flying. He was flying to Thailand, fingering kids. I mean, just flying there again. It's like that was the uh, fuck. Who's that? Todd Barry, funniest bit ever. How he's like, I genuinely like going to Thailand, but now that I'm a 40 year old man, I can't go. Of explaining <laughs> like, oh, I'm just going to Thailand. People are like, are you? He's like, no, no, I just fucking like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that is that's basically the Lolita Express. Like Thai Air is the Lolita Express. Damn, think of getting on that plane. Just shoulder to shoulder with big boys. Just boners, Fat dude. boys bumping into each other, little creeps, little oh weird creeps. Oh, my God, dude. That's a fun... That's like... The, you know how they made Soul Plane for black people? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they should make a Thailand plane for fucking pedophiles. This is perfect. For perverts and pedophiles. That's a sick movie. They had, like, Snoop flying the Soul Plane. You could get, like, Jared from Subway. Oh, my God. You get all the, all the, like, classic perverts on one plane. They should get, like, a Con Air situation. True. To where it's like they're like all tied up in the back, and the plane breaks over Thailand, and they all like, fucking Jared's like Nick Cage in the back. He comes out, he's like, "Let's fuck these kids. <laughs> we gotta fuck these kids. You can't stop me from fucking." Damn, these. that's oh, Con Air with nothing but pedof- pedophiles. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> they crash land in Thailand in the jungle, dude. Woo. <laughs> it's like perfect. <laughs> One of them's like reformed is trying not to fuck kids. Yeah. Any, Who do you through. think that would be? You think Jared? I don't think Jared. Nah, Jared was going hard in the paint. I think Sandusky is is probably changed his ways. Sandusky's like Hannibal Lecter, dude. He's fucking. He has the mask. Sandusky's definitely in the cage with the mask, dude. It's not Jared. I'm trying to. I think think it might be Cosby. Louis, bro. 
Louis, Wait, Louis on pervert plane? He got they lumped him into fucking like Epstein and all oh, that. Oh, Louis definitely Nicholas Cage in there. Yeah. True. <laughs> Yo, Very he's similar. The guy, yeah, he's like he was just a good man that got caught up in bad circumstances. He got like a bar fight and killed a guy. <laughs> that's what. Ha- that's what. <laughs> that's what. That's what got him on the plane. Yeah, dude. Just like a complete could have happened to anybody. Could have happened to anybody. Now he's dude. on here with some real perverts and he's got to take them down, dude. <laughs> yeah. Who's Cyrus the virus? <laughs> Who's the virus, dude? I'm trying to think of all the good pervs. Hannibal I mean, Lecter is definitely Sandusky. Sandusky is like number one on the pedophiles. Uh, Jer- Jared is definitely like the Joker. He's definitely the guy like. Fooling around, laughing, and chumming around. <laughs> Who's uh, Cyrus the his virus? boy, uh, Louis's boy, has got to be Cosby. I mean, Cosby oh. did the crime. Yeah, but Cosby's <laughs> crime. I fucking support Cosby. <laughs> CeeLo got lumped into that too. C-Lo Cosby was at a time where, in the seventies, you could you could roofie chicks. That was fu- yeah. That was like a. It was legal. It, it was. <laughs> it was culturally legal. You could no. You could in the seventies come home and be like, I slipped a little something in there to loosen her up. And people have been like, yeah. Yeah, nice, man. What'd you give her? I roofied her. I raped her. <laughs> Sick. That's great, man. That's groovy. Sometimes, yeah, dude. That's sometimes you gotta out, flip him a qua- quaalude, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely two guys in jean jackets with long sideburns. Like, hell yeah, bro. Yeah, far and out, he, man. He carried the party into the yeah. Kept the party going too. He long. just got aged out of rape. Yeah, you know what he I mean. Got, he should. I thought he should have been grandfathered into those rapes. You think so? Yeah. They should have gave him a pass. They should have been like, all right, man. No. Yeah. More. Well, that was Louis' thing. Sarah Silverman was saying on Stern like. They were saying, like, she was like, me and, like, Louie would jerk off for me all the time. And then if I was like, he'd be like, can I jerk off? Sometimes I'd be like, it'll stop. Or I'd be like, yeah, do it. She's like, but our day-to-day was like, we would get naked and throw our clothes off a balcony and, like, ride an elevator down. Like, go get our clothes, put them on, go to the top, get naked. Like, we were just, like, we were being, like, freaks. Yeah. So a lot, he's like, a lot of the older stuff was like. Which actually really sucks. They were, like, being, like, bohemian freaks. And then. Yeah, that sucks. Louis like, again, he was like, yeah, aren't we cool artists? And these two girls were like, yeah, we'll watch you do it. And they instantly went to the newspaper and were like, Louis, he can't carry it for us. Please advance our career. Apparently, what a nasty thing you just said. Well, apparently, what a nasty according thing to Silverman, you just said. according to Silverman, she was saying that the, she heard that those girls would tell that story at parties as like a funny thing that happened for a while. And then all of a sudden, the climate started, you know, the, sh- the old fog started settling in. They were like, you think we could get our stupid fucking comedy duo some heat? And they were like, yeah, dude, fucking do it. I wish you and me could get our stupid comedy duo some heat. We need it. <laughs> <laughs> Any of you guys want to break in here and rape us, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> we need some help, man. Our careers. <laughs> Not even that. Just, like, make us sexually uncomfortable. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, yeah. that was, a, again... Very inappropriate, and I apologize for my... What? That comment I just made. What, break in and rape us? Yeah, dude. Should have made that joke. They should have, dude. I got I'm starting out. I'm having a blossoming career right now. And I the know. last thing I need is... To get broken Some in. fucking pussy from the Philly comedy scene going through our podcast and oh, you stringing know together a highlight know, reel. <laughs> we're getting pussy audited for sure, dude. Yeah. You know we're getting... I'm going to get audited hard probably the in the next year. comedy...